Saw him laying down and looking away from us with the, we can see the little porky. So we got all squared away to wait for him to stand up. 20 minutes went by, nothing happened. I repositioned, got closer. Another 10 minutes, my eyes are watering, trying to focus and focus and focus and wait and wait and wait. Because once he stands up, he's not going to stay there long. And so finally the doe pops up closer to us than the buck look straight at us and so I oh game on he's gonna get up now she looked at us for probably 10 15 minutes just stared at <laughs> us and then laid down Tim crawled up to get closer and he's kind of very smartly kind of enough of this he turned and looked at us maybe for about a minute and then he stood up and then the doe just stood there after we shot the buck she stood there and looked at us with her rear right toward us looking back. Not a very good shot, and I said, I'll wait until she turned broadside, and she did. I was trying to see if it's still warm. It is still warm. <laughs> is it really? Yeah. So we got some back shot for tomorrow night? Yeah. Is that what that is? Yeah. We're gonna be Please eating man. good. It's definitely a buck. It's bigger than the one I saw earlier. Luke had previously hunted this spot with a friend who had a bear tag in 2011 and they did a combo trip for bears and deer at that time and uh, I think Luke was intrigued by the access the area you can really see a lot of area and you can really get into a lot of area we had also heard that the deer population at that location had been increasing we've had several mild winters and that really you know really helped the deer population to grow so we were hopeful we could get some deer while at the same time hunting for bear. We found that we were definitely seeing deer on this trip. Right away we could see deer. Um, and figured out pretty quick that because these deer were a little bit on the skittish side, it was gonna be a challenge for um, a party of four to get on a deer all at the same time. And so at that point in the trip, you know, here on the very first day, we, we pretty much decided that our success was going to go up, uh, splitting up into groups, two smaller groups of two. What a sicka blacktail buck looks like. Um, they're most closely related to mule deer, much larger cousin, of course. Um, you can get the uh, fine blacktail in southeast Alaska, all the way up to Prince William Sound up the coast, and uh, of course here on Kodiak, primarily primarily where they're found in Alaska. Um, in my opinion, they're some of the best eating in all of Alaska's wild game.
despite a lot of years of hunting um, and a lot of years of targeting black-tailed deer here in Alaska, I had never successfully taken a black-tailed deer before this hunt. So it was kind of a, um, a challenge for me. I had hunted southeast Alaska on two separate occasions, specifically for black-tailed deer, and hunted Kodiak on multiple occasions um, and would have taken a deer if the opportunity had presented itself, but it had not. So this, this trip was special for me. I was determined to get myself a deer. Nicely done, hon. You have to work cut out for us today, but you smoked that thing. Give me five. Awesomely done. I know how to shoot. <laughs> Now we got three dead deer on the wrong side of the mountain. Your dad's gonna kill us. <laughs> he doesn't have to do it. We can be packing deer for the next two days. I think we can get them all to the low spot today. This could be a lot of work. Day two of the hunt, uh, Luke and I packed everything back up the ridgeline to go retrieve the deer from day number one, and uh, Marty and Tim were hunting a ridge closer to camp. And Luke and I got up there to retrieve the deer and ended up killing two more deer on the wrong side of the ridge. So now we had three dead deer on the wrong side of the hill. Get off the ridge. Ended up spending two days making trips. Um, we got all the deer skinned out and bucked up and in game bags and in our backpacks and hauled them all to the highest point on the ridge and then made trips back to camp. And I think it took us two days to get it all back there. So we're almost back to camp with this next load of the three deer that we've got over the mountain yesterday. It's been pretty wet all day, so. But uh, overall, most of it get back to eat some meat and then maybe have some hot drinks and stuff and warm up. So, good day overall. What kind of a deer was it anyway? Two point, three point? Oh, I got pictures. Let me bust them out. I guess we could have been the watching if we answer's had a any clue one. what was going on. The There's last no... I know, you guys went around the mountain out of sight. Didn't think you came back. Oh yeah. Otherwise, we would have been watching the deer. The thing about these late season hunts is you can eat well because it's dark for so long. Here's a little few by three. It helps to have fresh meat in camp. This is a good one. Okay. Two by three. Yeah, good deer. Boy, oh boy, it looks primo. We just need three more for us, one more for dad, and three more for Tim. Isn't it good? That's, that's me the last year right there. I'm gonna give my moose roast away. No, really. Yeah, I had no idea that you guys had two deer down there. I just saw a game, couple game bags were out. I was doing a little extracurricular camp activity. Looked up from that and put my glasses on, and sure enough, these two white dots were goats. So, probably about three quarters of a mile away, really low. I think I'm gonna go try to make a play for them. It's pretty late in the day, but they're in a good spot and I wanna take advantage of that.
can't see everything below them, so it's going to be pretty difficult to pull this off. But let's go ahead and see how close I can get. Alright. Try to sneak up on these goats one last time. Get as close as I can. Hoping they're right around this corner. Meat care in the field worked out really well on this trip. Um, we were blessed to have a pretty consistent breeze, but not not too windy. So just enough, just enough of a breeze, and it was getting cold at night, but not terribly cold. So I don't think it ever got down below freezing, which was sort of unusual for Kodiak in November. But we were having kind of an unseasonably warm fall. Uh, but it was definitely getting down in the 30s at night and the meat was definitely able to get a good chill on it. We were able to hang meat in game bags and get the air circulating. Um, and I don't think we had any meat loss at all, even though we kept some of those deer more than a week in the field. That's good enough. Luke and I have a deck of cards. Um, I forget who makes it, but it's like an Alaska deck of cards. It's like Outlaws, Alaska Outlaws. So every every card has information about um, a character from Alaska's recent history. Everybody from politicians to criminals. Oh, look at that. Now she's out. Okay. I just don't have to subtract any points. I gotta subtract. Becca Stomp, the gentleman at uh, an ongoing card game of Rummy. We uh, had a had a nightly a nightly card game going on, and um, we listened to Car Talk podcasts and played Rummy every night. And um, I stomped everybody. <laughs> <laughs> There's probably 50 deer in this valley right here alone. Mm -hmm. You just, mm -hmm. you could see how hard this would be in in the summer, with leaves on everything. Mm -hmm.
gotten to the valley yet, and I think we've seen probably almost 10 already, so at least two bucks. We got two more far further up the hill, so if we can have it work for us. Oh, there's another deer. That's a buck deer. You see it down low. So there's those two. So that's 30 bucks now. So <laughs> just gotta. Moseying our way up this hill and take it slow and stop often, catch our breath, so we're ready to shoot at a moment's notice. Catching our breath here, we spotted a buck for about a half mile away, and uh, we, we went into the brush to lay down. So we walked over there, and we got about 250 yards of that brush. And he popped out, and I got ready with the gun, but by that time he was already kind of boogieing out of there. So the buck actually took off towards camp, so that's always a plus. So hopefully, we can run into him later, save us some packing. I think I might go after this guy, just walk the trail, see how close I can get. You guys can kind of give me hand signals left or right. We had three deer tags per person, so a total of 12 tags on this trip, and I think we could have filled those tags easily. Uh, we ultimately decided to stop with 10 deer down simply because we had as much meat as we thought we needed. So we, we had about, about a day at the end of the trip where we weren't really actively hunting anymore. We had already committed to paying for one extra flight for all our meat and pretty much just wanted to enjoy the, enjoy the last day in a beautiful place. Learning to hunt and starting to explore the outdoors has opened up a whole new Alaska for me. I grew up here, but the experience that I've had in Alaska since I started doing things outdoors um, is, is totally different than, than anything that I had experienced before I started doing those things. And um, the number of animals you can hunt, the number of places you can go um, and explore in Alaska, I mean, there just isn't enough, isn't enough time to explore them all and hunt them all. And so um, Alaska just really offers a lot of incredible opportunities for hunting and outdoor exploration. Most of my female friends don't hunt, so I, I didn't really grow up in a hunting sort of environment. I didn't really know a lot of women who hunted. Um, but when it's something that became a passion of mine, I um, really had a strong desire to encourage other women to think that they can do it. And I was not ever much of an athlete growing up. I had never fired a gun till I was, you know, 22, 23 years old. Um, in the last 10 years, it's become a real, a real passion for me hunting in the outdoors. And so I really like to try to do what I can to encourage other women uh, to realize that they can get out there and they can do this. And if you uh, put your mind to it and are interested and want to learn, you can, you can really get out there and do a lot of cool things here in Alaska. So Luke and I returned to Kodiak um, this spring to hunt my spring bear tag. And uh, that ended up being a pretty incredible adventure for us. Um, 
I think we both felt that we had a little bit of unfinished business with bears on Kodiak after Luke's fall tag had gone unfilled. And so the two of us spent 12 days um, alone. We hunted it on foot and via pack raft and um, spent, I think, I think 10 days we hunted and we got a bear uh, in the evening on the very last day we had planned to hunt before we needed to try to float back to our pickup spot. Our spring bear hunt <laughs> uh, coincided with the month of our eighth wedding anniversary. Luke and I have kind of a tradition of trying to do some spring bear hunting for our anniversary. Um, and so with me drawing a spring Kodiak bear tag and the timing worked out, we kind of celebrated our anniversary on the trip. Having Luke as my primary hunting partner has definitely brought the two of us closer. And I think we have learned to problem solve and work together in ways that we wouldn't have had a chance to learn to do, especially at the beginning of our marriage. You know, when you're spending 10 or 12 days a month together alone in a backpacking tent, you, you learn a lot about working together and a lot about persevering and working through challenges and working through adversity. And I think we are both better people individually and as a couple because of the outdoor experiences that we've shared.